in this lesson, lesson two, we're going to drill down on all the breathing skills. We breathe all the time, but nobody breathes like this when we're giving birth, whether we're lying on a table being cut open or whether in the throes of labor contractions. Our breathing changes. In fact, our breathing changes all the time in life. So we, as mothers and fathers who develop these skills, had to understand breathing, and none of us did. So let me give you an example. We discovered there are four ways, only four ways, that all humans breathe. Do you know them off the top of your head? No, you don't, but you will as soon as we tell you. Do you know of those four ways or breathing patterns, what the variations are? Probably not off the top of your head, but you'll instantaneously recognize them once we share these skills. And why is it important to know that you don't recognize them and why you will recognize them? Because if you did recognize them now, if you knew right away now, then the fact is you would be able to find the best breathing patterns and the best breathing variations for you to use during the birth of your baby. Now, why is that important? Well, there are two elements of birth. One is risk factors and the other is coping. So birthing better skills first developed when the cesarean rate was very low. So there weren't a lot of risk factors that ended up with a cesarean. Breaches, posterior babies, twins, women with diabetes, any of those women. We labored for hours and sometimes times for days. Cesareans were very serious and very few of them, 4.5% of births were by cesareans. So we first developed skills to cope, and that's really important. We wanted to cope, and we had asked that fathers come in to help us. We were sick of being left alone. So the idea now that women should be left alone to discover birth and midwives should sit in the corner, for people of my generation, it's like going backward. We want people to be with us. The truth is, is that no matter whether women are birthing by the side of a rice paddy or in the back seat of a taxi, we are always the only one doing the birth. We could be by ourselves or in a room with a hundred people. Nobody else is going to do the birth but us which means that we need to have really good skills. But another thing happens. If someone else is in the room, we expect them to know how to help us. And what does help us mean? Primarily, help us to cope, manage, deal with, handle, work through, stay on top of, and feel in control. Certainly, we want people to help us if there's a problem. But most medical issues don't end up with a problem. In fact, there's a woman called Marjorie Tu, T-E-W, who did all the research in the UK. Regardless of the risk factors, that does not determine how easily a baby comes out of our body or how well we cope. So you can have multiple, multiple risks and spit your baby out and cope brilliantly. Or you could be a woman who prides themselves on being low risk and normal and doing all the right things and yet struggle with coping with a natural occurring pain and end up with a very long complicated birth, even a cesarean. So it's important that you go through this lesson, learn about the four patterns, practice the variations, find out for yourself how you can cope and manage. And as a birth coach, you do the same because you're going to be able to hear and see how she is responding to what internal sensations are occurring and what's happening to or around her. You want her to cope and manage regardless of what she's feeling inside or what other people are doing to her. That's important.